Okay, so today I want to take everybody on my email list through some exercises that I've been using to increase the ability of the foot to both relax the arch into a more pronated position and then raise the arch up into a more supinated position by facilitating the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion of the metatarsal phalangeal joint. So when we look at this joint, this is kind of where we tend to get bunions or um, hallux valgus. So this first metatarsal sort of moves away from the second metatarsal. And as it does that, it rolls in. So these sesamoid bones at the bottom here tend to kind of turn more laterally that way. So we kind of go here and here. And then this first or great toe starts to come in. And that's where a lot of people will experience pain um, or just a discomfort because they can't fully flex their big toe up. And then that limits the ability of our arch to be able to come up into that rigid position, which we need for springiness off the ground. So we want to be able to flex this joint or allow the first met head to come up, which is gonna take slack out of this or into the system, put slack into the system so that I can go into that pronation. And then we also want this to be able to come down and the big toe to dorsiflex to take up that slack, which essentially is like rolling this heel under and pulling us into supination. So you can imagine this is like a wheel. And when I go up with this joint, I am allowing that wheel to turn here and go into pronation. And when I go down with this joint, I'm pulling this wheel underneath to create that nice arch. So when we think about the foot, why that's important is there's so many intrinsic muscles in there, but there's also this huge fascial layer. And alongside the Achilles tendon, we can store a lot of free energy in there. So if we can keep our feet very dynamic and reactive, it can allow us to spring off the floor a little bit easier, have a better time in gait, kind of recoiling. Um, and that just helps our bodies function better overall. So let's get to the drills. So if you look at my feet, I'm gonna show you my toes. I do not have a pedicure. <laughs> Don't expect much from me. Um, you can see how my right big toe is more in line with that joint than my left. See how my left toe goes in. I also evert more on this side. So I'm already living in a more pronated or everted state. And you can see I have a little bit more of a bunion here. So if I were to dorsiflex this right toe, I get this great spring up of my arch. So I'm keeping pressure in this joint. It's pushing down. My arch is coming up. Okay, so see that? But when I go to dorsiflex my left toe, what you're gonna notice is I don't get as much of that spring. So my arch is not coming up nearly as much, even if I really try, and my toe sort of is going in to that um, valgus angle, which is now putting more pressure and allowing that first met to move away from the second. So here's a little fix for that. Let me bring you back up so you can see my whole body. So I'm going to use a band. And the band is going to help pull my toe away from that second med head. So I'm sorry, from the second toe. So I'm going to place the band around my big toe. And I'm going to step away a bit, but not a ton, just so I have some pressure kind of pulling out. So now my toe is nice and aligned with that first med head. I'm gonna go ahead and weight my foot. I wanna keep my knee soft. I have a kickstand here for balance. You could also hold on to something just to give yourself a little extra balance. And all I'm gonna do is raise up onto my toe. I'm really focusing on not coming off that first net head. So I don't wanna come up and end up like rolling out to the lateral side of my foot into my pinky toe. I wanna make sure that I come up and I stay centered. So as I go up and down, I am now creating that roll back of the calcaneus. I'm going into a little more inversion. I'm allowing for good dorsiflexion at the big toe and getting that kind of rigid arch at the top, okay? I'm also working a lot of the intrinsic muscles of the foot and of the calf complex. 
So what you can do is start off doing about 15 of these on each side. And you're probably gonna notice a difference between the sides. So that's step one, okay? So we're just getting that dorsiflexion in a good position, that nice alignment of the first ray, first met head there, okay? Step number two. I want you to grab a yoga block and you're going to put, if your foot's really big, you might need to um, put it onto a step of some sort, but anything you have that's hard and that your big toe can hang off of. So I'm going to take the block and I'm going to put my foot on there and I want to make sure that this first joint is on the block, okay? So when the net head, like I said, pushes up, we can get more of a release through the arch. So I'm going to let my toes just naturally hang down here. I'm going to go down into a split squat and I'm going to purposely push my knee forward into the split squat, relaxing my toes so that my arch has a chance to kind of lengthen in this position. Okay, so I'm going to go down, arch is coming down, knee is going forward. I'm staying heavy on my heel and I have some weight in that first joint. Okay, so I don't want to push way into my toe because I'm not going to get the same effect. So stay heavy on the heel and go straight down. I'll usually cue an exhale here and then back up. So do about maybe six to 10 of those in a row. You should feel your glutes really kick on in that position. Okay, so step three here. We've gotten a little bit of that um, supination and dorsiflexion, and then we just got some plantar flexion and a little bit of pronation here, okay? So now I want you to experience standing on the block. So I'm gonna stand here, same position as I was. I wanna keep my knee soft. And as I lift my right toe, see how my arch kind of springs up? So now I'm getting that range of going down and up and working on that arch position. So if you struggle like I do on my left, this can be a great way to strengthen some of those muscles of the foot after you do the band exercise, okay? So I'm keeping pressure on that first joint. I don't wanna come back on or lock my knee and stay on my heel. I want to keep over my midfoot and lift up so I can feel those muscles working and that fascia allowing that dynamic movement to happen. Okay, so we've got step one, step two, step three, step four, we're going to put it all together. This was the exercise I showed on my last IG post. So what you're going to do is you're going to start on the block. We're gonna go ahead, and I would suggest using something to hold on to because it's gonna make this a lot easier. We're gonna go ahead and go all the way down into that split squat, letting the toes relax. I'm gonna take an exhale. I wanna feel like my arch can lengthen out. I'm heavy in my heel, but I still have some pressure in that first MTP joint. And then I'm gonna come all the way up. And as I stand up, I'm gonna lift my toes. I'm not gonna lock my knee. I'm gonna stay into that foot, okay? This is actually externally rotating my entire leg up the chain, okay? Then I'm gonna go back down, exhale. When we exhale, it promotes more internal rotation, allows all the joints to relax. And then when we inhale, we're promoting more external rotation, allowing that leg to spin out, find some inversion and supination, and then exhale, everything spins in. Inhale, everything spins out. Exhale, everything spins in. So give that a try. I would say maybe five reps at a time, you can take a rest break and do it again. And then just go for a walk and see if you notice a change overall in sort of the, the ability of your foot to spiral in and out into that IR and ER that we're looking for. Um, a couple of things I will say, this does not take the place of using pronation drills to drive good pronation. And if your foot is already flat, it doesn't mean that you don't need pronation. 
And in all likelihood, you actually need pronation to allow those tissues to lengthen so that they can get that recoil because they never, they always stay in a lengthened state. So if you're looking for some good pronation drills, I um, have a whole series recorded on my YouTube. So you can also go check out that video um, and I'll link it in this email to you guys. So I really hope this was helpful. That was a mouthful. Go through the steps and please send me an email back and let me know how you liked everything. <laughs>